Hi, this is Meghnath and in this video we're going to learn about data types in C Sharp. So let's see the agenda for today's video. Now we will start with learning importance of data, learning data types and also we'll discuss on data types in C Sharp and we will learn about the usage of size of keyword and max value and minimum value which will help us to find the maximum and minimum value that can be stored in a specific data type. And then we will see about uh, what is the topic that we are going to see in the next lecture. And then we will have a quiz on these topics that we, that we are going to learn in this video. So let's get started. So data types play very much effective role uh, in maintaining the long run of the application as well as it also saves uh, memory considerably if you choose appropriate data type. Okay, so let's see what does it mean. So in C Sharp, we have data types like int, we have data types like byte, we have data type like long. So now we might get a question, I want to store age of a person, so in a variable. So which one is the best way to declare? So we have to make decision in such a way that this age of a person, all possible values for age of a person will be stored in the variable in as much less memory as possible. So in this case, in after completing next slide, we'll come back to this slide and we'll try to understand. So to make it let me to make it clear, let me give you one real time example. If we want to cut a small cake, will you use a knife or a sword? Both will work, but unnecessarily we are spending extra money and also we will face difficulties with this. Rather this is simple. Similarly here, if you can store in a small data type, you can store age of a person, it's always good to go for that respective data type instead of going for a long data type. Okay, that makes some considerable comparison. So now let's see the data types in C Sharp. So here, these are the data types which are used for integral values. So if I want to store values from zero to 255, I can use by data type. A by data type will hold values from, will can store values from 0 to 255 and it takes one byte of memory. It takes one byte of memory. So how did we get this 255 is one byte is equal to eight bits and eight bits is equal to eight and eight bits, the biggest value that can be stored is eight ones. And when you convert this to decimal, you will get 255. That's how we got this 255. And if you want to understand more on this, you can go through the lecture two, where we discussed about number system and memory units. Okay. So, or let me open calculator and quickly show you now. I'm going to open in the run command. I'm going to type now CALC and click on okay. Now you can see here, calculator got open here. Now one byte, one byte is I'm getting this byte data type and range I have typed it as 0 to 55 and let's see here I'm going to click on binary and type 8 once 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 now you can see that the decimal value the biggest value is 255 that is how we got the range for one byte so in one in byte data type when you declare a variable with byte data type you can store the values from 0 to 255 and byte data type requires two byte, one byte of memory and u short stands for unsigned short and it takes two bytes of memory and this is the range of values that you can store when you declare a variable with u short data type and again how we got this 65535 is two bytes is equal to 16 bits and 16 bits when you convert 16 bits to decimal you will get 65535 so let's see this now we have here 8 ones 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 now you can see here 16 two bytes is equal to 65535 and that is the value we have here. And similarly, uint is for unsigned int and four bytes, and this is the value that can be stored in uint. And ulong, it takes eight bytes of memory, and if you want to store very large values, you can go for ulong data types, unsigned long data type. And if you want to store negative numbers, and depending on the range of values which you want to store, let's take I want to store minus a minus 100 to 100 values, some values between minus 100 to 100, and it's always good to go for S by data type. 
instead of going for long data type because when you go for long data type for storing values from minus 100 to 100 you are if you go for long data type you are unnecessarily wasting additional additional seven bytes of memory in the stack okay so for that reason it's always necessary for us to to use or to declare appropriate data type which can save the memory and which will be which will be sufficient for storing the values which we need to store so to just summarize byte u short u int u long are for positive values s byte short int or long or for or for positive as well as negative values and in this case if you see here u short take two bytes and this range and in this case short also takes two bytes but in this in this since it's got divided into two and out of these two bytes let's take 16 bits the first one bit is used for storing the signature and the remaining 15 bits are used to storing the number so that is how you got 15 bits 15 ones when you convert to when you convert to decimal you will get this value okay so now this is about integral values so let's see this now I'm going to open Visual Studio to make it a little very clear for you see here how do we declare a byte variable so I just open Visual Studio I'm going to create file new project and I'm going to create a simple console application and let's see this now so here I'm going to declare a value of byte data type and age byte age is equal to 100 and if I write console dot write line age is equal to age is equal to floor bracket 0 and comma age now I'm going to put here console dot read line so, so now if you see here in case of this floor bracket 0 this value will be printed this value will be printed this is exactly same like if you have any experience in C language you would have seen like this so if you are a C language developer or if you have seen any time C language programming you'll write like this printf age is equal to person d comma age right so this is exactly same like uh, in case of person d this value will be printed and in case of floor bracket 0 this value will be printed okay or if you have or there is other way to do it is you can actually go for you can even append it instead of this floor bracket 0 you can simply append it like plus age see here you can even do this okay so anyway we will learn about this later for now I declared a variable with byte and I just assigning hundred and I can I can print the output now the range of byte which as per the slide is 0 to 55 and if I try to assign 300 you can notice here straight away that I'm seeing a red line below that that indicates that when I move the mouse here you can see that cannot convert 300 cannot be converted to byte because byte can only store 0 to 255 so if I change this to 255 you can see that the red line will disappear now but if I change even to 256 you can see that that value will not be stored cannot be stored and you will see a red line there okay so depending on your requirement let's take for example I work for let's take if I'm working for NASA and where I want to store distance between two planets or very large value I want to store in that case definitely I can go for uint or u long depending on the value which I want to store okay so that way you have to take your decision best possible decision to select appropriate data type now let's see the next data types which we have so we have for storing decimal values like 2.5 3.5 and etc we have three types of variables like we have called float we have double we have decimal so float is having size of 4 bytes double will take 8 bytes and decimal will take 16 bytes and if you see here when you use a variable float the precision is 7 digits when you use double the precision is 15 to 16 digits and when you use decimal it's more precise so whenever you want to store values like let's take for example you want to store uh, you work for chemistry let's take you are working for you are doing a project for chemistry department where you want to store size of a neutron or size of a proton where you want to store 0 0.0000000 and 00657 or in that case where you need very very accurate values in that case you can go for you can go for decimal 
or you can go for double depending on the uh, depending on the pre precision that you need okay so and this is the size here um, here float is 4 bytes double is 8 bytes decimal is 16 bytes and for storing characters if you want to store a single character you can go for care of uh, care and you can store all unicode characters any character you can store in character and if you want declare uh, if you want to go for names and it's good to go for string data type and to store boolean value like true or false you can go for bool data type okay so these are the most frequently used data types in c sharp and and now let's say size of max value and min value so you can try running this program and see what is the output so size of is a keyword which is used to print the size of the data type so we already learned this byte data type the size of byte data type is one so that one will be printed here and in case of lower brackets one max value will be printed here and in case of lower brackets two min value will be printed here so let's see the output for this you can try running this and you can see the output now see here i'm showing the output here so first one size of byte is it's in case of flower bucket zero this will print size of byte and you can see here it's printing one and that is what we learned in the, in the previous slides so byte takes one byte of memory and max value is 255 and similarly all other data types we are using size of keyword and data type dot max value will print the maximum value that can be stored data type dot min value will print the minimum value that can be stored okay so with this we declare we learned about the importance of data types we also learned about data types that are available in c sharp and we learned about size of max value and min value so let's see next one so in the next video we're going to learn about control structures in c sharp which are like uh, which are of two kinds one is branching and one is looping in branching we will learn about if else condition if else if else condition switch case and uh, all those things we learn in 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 branching and in looping we'll learn about for loop while loop and do while loop and we will see a lot of programs using that in the next lecture which is lecture six and now is the time for you to take quiz in the description section of this video in youtube you will find a link where you have to take quiz on what we have learned in this video okay and do remember to share this to all your friends who are interested in learning c sharp and also don't forget to subscribe for more videos thanks for watching have a great day